Hello, welcome to Exotic Ghana UK, York Chris Weekly. I'm here under my archway and it's absolutely covered in these wonderful chocolate vine flowers. So I've got two vines that I planted as very small plants just about four years ago now. It cost about £1.50, something like that, from the supermarket. And I've got two varieties. We've got the traditional purple one and we've got a whitey cream version as well. And these produce the most intoxicating scent and this year for whatever reason it's much stronger than normal so it's absolutely gorgeous can smell it right down the garden at any time of day and later on in the season we'll have these wonderful unusual blue purple sausage like fruit that are a bit like passion fruit but much bigger and these will hang down from this archway so it'll add some interest later in the year as well <music> Well, what a wonderful spring it's been so far. I've had loads of glorious sunshine, we've had some decent warm days, and most importantly, we haven't really had many frosts of late. And plants have really responded to this, and as I look around the garden, I can see so much new growth on practically everything. So the shefflers are budding up and growing new leaves from the centre. We've got the wonderful aralia unfurling its leaves as well. The tree ferns are into action already, so quite early for me. And we've also got buds for things like the gingers showing their faces. The colocasias that are left in the ground are also growing strongly now. And here I've got my gunnera that I uncovered recently, gunnera manicata, and it's unfurling its first major leaves of the year. And these will get much taller than me and cover this entire area and probably cover this shefflet behind me as well but it's been really dry recently so we need to water things I mean most established plants in the garden won't need water yet it's still early in the year and obviously there's a lot of moisture still in the ground but a few things would really benefit from extra watering and the two main things are the gunneras especially if they're not grown in a bog location so the gunneras need plenty of water to get their big leaves to their maximum size as well as feeding as well so i'm watering this quite a lot just to get those big leaves unfurling and the other plants that need lots of water are the tree ferns so dixonia antarcticas i've been watering them on the sprinkler system pretty much every day recently because it's been warm sunny and it's been pretty windy as well and very dry so they need that water to grow well so those are the two major plants i've been watering as well as obviously all the plants in pots so this is my european fan palm Chemops humulus. I've had a lot of people ask how do you get one big trunk on a Chemops humulus because basically it normally grows as a shrub so multi-stemmed lots of different trunks forming from the base and you don't really get that typical one trunk palm of many other palm species. Well basically that it's because it's quite a variable uh, plant so there's many varieties of Chemops humulus huge variation on these plants. Some grow very sort of tatty, some grow bluish leaves, silver leaves, some grow sort of uh, quite tall and some grow very sprawling as well. So they are got a lot of variability. And some like to grow with one big dominant trunk and some like to grow with lots of trunks. This one here, I bought it and it was multi-trunked, but it had one trunk that was a bit more dominant than the others. And I've picked that one out specifically so that I could actually grow it as a, a single trunk specimen. And you probably can see here, it's got good leaf growth quite all the way down the trunk and it's high now. So this is about two meters, it's over two meters in height. And I'm gonna show you how to keep it and manage it so that it keeps with one trunk and it doesn't grow lots of little trunks around the base. So every year or so I do go around and prune some leaves off, the oldest leaves. So try just to get the ones that are damaged um, or gone brown, but just for basically to look a bit nicer and to get through this path, I've got a couple of leaves I do need to take back that are green. So I'll just take those off now. And by doing so, you'll be able to see more of the trunk here as well and this one's in the way of the path so I'll just take this down 
just be careful of the, the thorns because there's lots of vicious thorns on the European fan palm. So ideally wear gloves. So we've got those out of the way and now we can look down at the base and we can see we've got a couple of little suckers trying to grow and we want to remove these so that all the energy goes into this one main trunk. So here we can see the suckers which are relatively healthy but we don't want them growing because we want all the energy to go in this main trunk here and it is sort of probably tempting to think can you sort of dig these up or divide them, take them off the trunk and propagate them. Well in all honesty uh, it's not very uh, reliable to do so because you don't normally get roots if you try to dig these from the base because basically all the roots are in the main plant and, and these sort of growing off the base of the trunk so you don't really have their own uh, root system. Sometimes you get the odd root but they do sort of suffer and take ages to grow back so I'd advise not trying to separate these to grow on what I would advise basically cutting them at ground level or where they come out of the trunk of the main plant just to remove them and don't try to propagate them. So I'm just going to use my secateurs to get off most of the foliage and these sort of do shoot every spring and like I said some decide to shoot more than others. Some try to grow as many trunks and some put all their energy in one big trunk. And this one, like I said, most of the energy goes in this big trunk, but we want all the energy to go in there. So we'll just remove all these leaves and get right into the base there, just so we don't have any green material showing from these suckers. And that's all you need to do. These will start growing again throughout the year and you just sort of keep on top of them and just cut them back as close as you can to the main trunk without damaging that main trunk. You don't want to go into that, no point risking it. And there we are, just clear all that away. Clear away the weeds and everything as well around here. And then as we're into spring now, into April, I will give this a feed. This is in a gravel bed. I will put some blood, fish and bone around here just to give it a top up of sort of organic slow release fertilizer. that will keep it going throughout the season. So that's all the suckers removed now. Just need to clear them away. And that shows you've got the nice big trunk. And you may notice some other things along this trunk. And these are the old sort of flowering heads or pseudo seeds that tried to form over the last couple of years. I've left them on just for a bit of interest. When people come round, they can explain what they are. But you can obviously remove these as well to make it a neater looking trunk. And talking about palm flowers, let's have a look at some nice yellow palm flowers on the Trachycarpus palms. So this is a regular Trachycarpus fortunii palm, very hardy and at this time of the year they do start flowering and if you've never had them flower before you may wonder what these weird yellow structures are and as we zoom in we can take a closer look at these and I'll explain the difference between the male and the female flowers. So these wonderful structures look like uh, smoke kippers uh, they're not a parasite, they're not something to be worried about. These are the flowers of the Trachycarpus palm. And these are basically the buds. The flowers aren't out yet, so in another week or two, these will develop further and open up, and they'll be sort of branched, and they will have lots of little baubles, basically, on them that are the flowers. And these plants are male or female. So this one here, will have either a male flower or a female flower. It won't generally have both and need a male and a female to get that pollen onto the female and to pollinate it to get seeds forming. If you just have one palm tree in your garden, then you're not going to get seeds forming because you need a male and a female. Unless, of course, your neighbours got the opposite sex and you get the pollen to come across. So what to look out for in the male and female is basically when these flowers open up, what you'll see in the male is if you just brush them you'll get dust, yellow dust on your fingers and that is a pollen and also the flowers are bright bright yellow whereas the female flowers they're more branched 
and you will get that pollen. You will get bits falling off, which you might think of pollen, but it's not like dust-like, it's, it's more like granular. And the actual colour is more of a, a greenish yellow. So the difference between male and female Trachycarpus flowers are the colour. So yellow, bright yellow in males, greenish yellow in females, pollen obviously on the males, and sort of like granular, grainy material on the females. So that's how to tell the difference. And we'll have to wait probably another week or two before all these flowers are out. And even my Trachycarpus wagnerinus is also flowering. Here we have my unknown Trachycarpus flowering. It's done this now for two years in a row. And more excitedly, just to the right, we've got this wonderful ginger Trachycarpus. And this is Trachycarpus princeps hybrid. And if we just have a look up and up again, we will see we have got some flowers emerging for the very first time on my Princept Hybrid. So that is very exciting news. But unfortunately, the Trachycarpus species that many of us are hoping will flower soon, Trachycarpus orophyllus, although it's you know well over two meters tall now, is not showing any signs that it's gonna flower this year. So hopefully, Fingers crossed, it will flower next year. So this weekend, I was lucky enough to go to the Harrogate Flower Show, which is a wonderful spring flower show in Harrogate in North Yorkshire. And they do lots of traditional plant stalls, but they have lots of interesting plants as well. And on one plant stall, I managed to pick up some wonderful variegated aeoniums. So I've got this one here, and another multi-headed specimen here look at this fantastic beautiful coloration this is aeonium mardi gras and this is a multi-headed one and it's got the variegation from the creams and greens going out to the pinks and purples absolutely stunning and i'll be growing these on this year and propagating them as well to bulk up my supplies and we also picked up this uh, cream yellowish and green variegated aeonium and this is Aeonium arboreum variegata. So this will grow relatively tall, branching as well. And again, I will propagate these so I've got lots of uh, backup plants and specimen plants that I can grow. I also picked up some wonderful dahlias as well. So I've got lots that I keep in the ground in the garden and I thought I'd just add to my collection this year. And one that's very well known and popular is David Howard, which is orange one here with dark foliage but it's one that I just don't grow I've never been able to find but I found it at the flower show and this one I've got two tubers here and what you're looking for when you're buying tubers is they are quite strange sort of, sort of swollen sort of stems and roots on the ear what you're looking for is actually some growth or some little buds of starting to grow without any sort of Bindly growth. So basically here you can see, if we just zoom in, you can see some little pink shoots in there. So we've got the start of the dailies growing. So that's good. If these were long and spindly, then they've been warm and potentially moist for too long and they will have used up a lot of energy trying to grow that spindly growth. So ideally you want no growth at all, but nice plump so tubers or you want just the starting of growth like you can see here so these will be potted up in multi-purpose compost in their own individual pots just below the surface and these will root and grow very quickly and they'll be planted out in the garden in a month or so's time now here's something i just wanted to quickly show you and that is a cloche that i've got over a cycas revoluta I've got the cloche over here so that it will heat up really, really a lot basically so that the cycad underneath will hopefully flush and get a new flush of leaves this spring and summer. So they want intense heat and they want lots of water to flush readily. So I chopped all the leaves off this early last season. Didn't flush last year, but I didn't put a cloche over it. So this year I'm adding that extra cloche just to give that extra heat and hopefully we'll get a nice flush in the next few months. But you may notice if you look at the condensation on the side of the, the cloche, there's loads and loads of lines across it, swirly lines. And these are where all the slugs and snails have had a little walk through the night. So you can see there's lots of mollusks in my garden. 
and I got this cloche from the Munro Cloche Company. It comes flat packed and it's dead easy to put together. You just put a little uh, wing nut on it and it sort of overlaps at the top and it's uh, very sturdy. I'll just take it off just to show you. It's really good, strong, thick plastic material here. And there we are, that's the uh, Cycas that we're waiting for it to flush. It's been harder in my location because I've kept it protected in winter. So it's been in the ground now, what, five years, I think, five, six years. Just waiting for that new flush of growth. So next, we're going to grow some aloe polyphyllas from seed. And I've got some wonderful specimens that I've got in pots in the garden. The wonderful spiral aloe. Very architectural, very unusual, and they can be grown from seed. So here we have a little, little packet of seeds, and as you can see, there's sort of dark black seeds, not too small, not like dust or anything like that. And these are going to be grown or germinated in water, so that's kind of unusual. So we're not putting them into any compost or anything like that. So we've just got a little container full of tepid water. So this water is at about 20 degrees. And I'm just going to pour the seeds in. And these will float to begin with. But they will eventually sort of sink down. And then it can be quite erratic, so we could expect maybe a month or so before these seeds actually germinate. And we'll just top up the water and change the water from time to time so it doesn't go off and a bit, you know, a bit smelly and keeps the water fresh. So we'll do that every sort of day or two. And when they've germinated, we'll go on to the next stage. So earlier we looked at my European fan palm, Cumops humilis. Well, this is another European fan palm, but this is a bluer version and this is Cirifera. And this is growing very different from my big one trunked specimen. This has lots and lots of smaller stems and it's much, much slower growing. So the habit of this one is to be pretty low growing, sort of spreading out in all directions. We've got trunks sort of coming towards the camera, away, side and sort of up as well. And I'm not going to try to force this to grow one trunk upwards because they're coming out at all angles with equal vigour in all different directions and it wouldn't really do well trying to grow it as a single stem specimen. But you can get rivers as single stem specimens, uh, but this isn't one of them. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Garden UK. Join me next week, we'll be doing more in the garden.